Okay, remember this horrible mess? Let's get rid of that for now, and we'll go through each one of these things separately. But first, let's just talk about this, the uh, crashing neonate. And by neonate, we mean anybody within the first month of their life, so like 28, 30 days. And the first thing that pops into most people's minds when they're thinking about the sick neonate is sepsis. And yeah, that could be the cause, and maybe that's what it is. But there is so much more, so we really have to have an organized approach. And there's a, a mnemonic for this. It's called the misfits, which helps you remember some of these causes. So let's go through them. It's uh, trauma or non-accidental trauma slash abuse, heart disease, endocrine like congenital adrenal hyperplasia and thyrotoxicosis, metabolic disturbances, inborn errors of metabolism, sepsis, Formula mishaps, like they're either over-concentrating it or uh, under-concentrating it, diluting it too much. Intestinal catastrophes, toxins, and seizures. So let's remember the misfits for our differential diagnosis. And before we go any further, let's talk about vital signs and what's normal in these kids. For some reason in these babies, I never, ever, 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 ever see a blood pressure. I'm not sure why, because I've seen those cute little baby blood pressure cuffs, so I know they make them. But for some reason, we don't get them. But that's wrong. We should. And the systolic blood pressure should be greater than 60 millimeters of mercury. That's the lower limit. The heart rate should be between 120 and 200. Anything over 220, you know, then you start worrying about SVT. The respiratory rate is usually between 30 and 60. And a fever is classified as anything with a temperature greater than or equal to 100.4. And bundling, that is wrapping the baby up in a lot of blankets and coats and everything, might make the skin warm, but it is not going to change the rectal temperature. So don't blame it on bundling. And that reminds me, make sure you check a rectal temp. And, of course, remember to check a pulse ox. Next, let's talk about the primary survey. That's your airway, breathing, and circulation. And one great aid during this is something called the Braslow Luton tape, or just shortened the Braslow tape. And what that is, it's just this piece of paper that you unfold and you put next to the kid, and you measure the kid. So you put their head at one end, and then you see how far their feet go down to. And then you can correspond it to a color. Now, the way this works is, at least in babies now, uh, their length corresponds pretty well to their weight. And so if a kid is this long, chances are they weigh a certain amount. Thanks to McDonald's and Cheetos and other stuff like that, this doesn't apply so well to older kids now because they're just a lot chubbier. But rather than guessing their weight, you can measure the neonate against this tape. And so in this case, it's purple. And so within this little section is going to be all purple-sized equipment, like a purple-sized ET tube, a purple-sized blade, a purple-sized um, NG tube. And you flip it over, there's also purple-dosed drugs. So this purple area might correspond to him being 10 kilograms. So it might tell you on there to use a Mac 1 blade and a 3.0 ET tube or a Miller 1 blade. And on the opposite side, it'll tell you how much uh, D10 to give and how much adenosine or what other drugs you might, might need to give. So let's talk about airway first. You might need to intubate these babies because... Uh, to protect their airway, or maybe they're not breathing on their own, or maybe to take away their own work of breathing. And so preemie babies, you might need a 2.5 millimeter tube, and full-term babies, maybe a 3.0 tube. But don't worry about that. Just look at the tape, and the tape will tell you. We used to have to use this formula to get their ET tube size. It was 16 over the age in years, over 4. But uh, that wasn't really, doesn't work out that well. Again, just use the tape. Or if you're in a bind, find something that's about the size of their pinky finger. 
Next, let's look at B for breathing. And so you might need to suction these kids, especially if they have like a lot of secretions, maybe with uh, bronchiolitis. If they're wheezing, you might need to give them some nebs, uh, but most likely you're going to put them on 100% O2, usually by bag valve mask. This should improve their saturations, but those cyanotic heart diseases, they really won't respond to that, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Now let's look at circulation. So the first thing you got to do is get a line in these people, and so you could try to get an IV in if you can. But they're babies, and their veins are tiny, and they're probably dehydrated and very stressed uh, people trying to put them in, so it's not going to be easy. So don't mess around with it too long. If you can't do it, don't worry about it. Put in an I.O. Nowadays, they have these drills that you can just put them in within seconds, and they have uh, infant size and adult size and kid size uh, I.O.s that you can choose from. Put it in and secure it, and then you're going to want to give a bolus. If this patient is in shock, you're going to want to give a 10 to 20 cc per kilogram bolus. If you're thinking that there's heart disease, maybe you want to start on the lower end. If you're thinking that they might be septic, start on the higher end. And maybe you don't do 20, maybe you do 40 or even 60. If there's no change after 80 cc's per kilogram, maybe it's time to start pressors. And in kids, we're using dopamine, 6 to 10 micrograms per kilo per minute. And that should be given through a central line, because if you put it through a peripheral, you might sclerose the veins, those small uh, peripheral veins. But you can give it through an I.O. in a pinch, because you're not going to sclerose the bone. If they're in shock because they're bleeding, then you got to give them blood. And you can give 5 to 10 uh, cc's per kg to start. And don't forget to check a blood glucose in these neonates. Anything less than 30 is considered hypoglycemic. But in symptomatic patients, which are all of these crashing neonates, they're all symptomatic, anything less than 60 should really be treated. And you're going to want to give D10, 3 to 10 cc's per kilogram, or just make it uh, several 2 cc per kilogram boluses and keep rechecking. Now one last thing I want to point out, and that... Uh, came from the MRAP, uh, Mel Herbert. He came up with this uh, mnemonic that in these neonates, the number 60 is bad. Look at this. If you have a glucose less than 60, that's bad. If your systolic blood pressure is less than 60, that's bad. If your respiratory rate is greater than 60, that's bad. So that's it for this lesson. So in the next ones, we're going to go through each one of these the misfits uh, of our differential diagnosis. All right, talk to you later.